One of our Lord's most famous responses to the Pharisees is definitely the one that the gospel presents to us today when our Lord goes and says, Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. Now, this can be interpreted in so many different ways, but let's try to apply it today to our spiritual lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, Salve Maria, and welcome to this Sunday's Gospel Commentary. Today's Gospel is presented to us by St. Matthew, chapter 22, verses 15 to 21. And here we see the Pharisees try to catch our Lord off guard in order to kind of put him into a difficult situation. Now, in order to do this, the Pharisees bring up a problematic kind of social political question for the time of the Lord when they ask our Lord, Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? What did they wish to achieve with this question of taxes? We all know that the Pharisees, in their great majority, hated our Lord because of their diabolical envy and, and pride. With this question of taxes, they hoped to kind of trick our Lord into giving them a, a response that they could use to turn the people against Him. In their evil cunningness, they did not ask Him this question themselves they actually sent someone else um, to ask this question to our Lord because they didn't want to arouse suspicion with regards to their evil intent. They knew that our Lord would not trust their apparent neutrality if they showed up before him themselves. So what did they do? St. Matthew says that they sent their disciples to him with the Herodians. Now, these disciples of the Pharisees were probably very young um, and so would give a deceptive good impression of being kind of unbiased and somewhat innocent to our Lord. But why also did they send the Herodians? The Herodians were supporters of Herod. Herod was a Jew, yes, but he lived off the support of the Romans. So, here, both sides were re represented here in this group that uh, went to speak to our Lord. So on one side, we have the Israelites, and the other side, the Herodians. If our Lord took the position of the Israelites, who did not want to pay taxes to Caesar, he would offend the Herodians, and therefore, the Romans. If our Lord said that the tax had to be paid to Caesar, he would offend the Jews, who did not want to submit to the Romans. Now, these evil Pharisees had everything covered. They, their trap, their trap was perfectly laid for our, our Lord to fall into. Now, it is interesting to note that the Pharisees, being Jews, not only hated our Lord, but they also hated Herod and the Herodians, because Herod supported the Romans. And therefore, Herod and, and his followers were, were considered traitors. But here we see them join hands and unite together against their common enemy, who was our Lord Jesus Christ. Evil is always like that. Though evil people and evil organizations seem to disagree between themselves, they always unite against those who are good. So, the Pharisees didn't realize it, but they were actually trying to trap the eternal and incarnate wisdom, the Son of God Himself. Um, our Lord could not be fooled. He knew their plans from all eternity. Well, their disciples arrived and started talking to our Lord and saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, 
for you do not regard a person's status. Now here, it's interesting to see how they begin to lay out their trap against the Lord by using a technique that evil people kind of always use. They start by apparently honoring and praising our Lord by saying that they know that he is a truthful and he is an honest man. This tactic um, is, is a tactic that, that evil people use and the devil himself uses to bring the good to fall into sin. And that tactic is using pride. Yes, pride. In order to dominate those who are good, evil people always try to make the good fall into becoming proud of themselves in order to make them sin. Remember how in the book of Genesis, the book of Genesis tells us that it was because of pride that Lucifer and his angels fell and revolted against God. This is the supreme tactic of the devil. And this is the method that he uses to make us humans fall into sin. Pride is terrible. And that's why it's called the mother of all sins. But this time, they are up against our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember how Jesus defeated Satan in the desert when the evil one tried to tempt him with pride? And the evil one failed, of course. And so, they continue with their argumentation. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? This was the question with which they hoped to trap Jesus. Because if the Lord said, yes, it is necessary to pay taxes to Caesar, the Jews would turn up against him. And if he said, no, it is not lawful to pay taxes to Caesar, then, of course, the Herodians would get the Romans to condemn Jesus. What would Jesus do? What would he say in reply? Knowing their malice, the Lord goes and says, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, Whose image is this, and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. And that, he said to them, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. With this brilliant and divine response, there was no way they could bring anything up against Jesus. At the same time, the Lord left a message for the future centuries of Christianity. That, mean, that message is that we Christians are called to respect all legitimate authorities, including the state, as long as the state does not contradict the law of God. Yes, our first obligation is always to God and then to Caesar. In this way, we Christians, um, we were taught by the Lord to give to the state that which the state can, can demand and to give to God that which God demands from us. This statement is also about our spiritual lives. In what way? Well, the coin here had an image of Caesar stamped on it. Well, brothers and sisters, our souls also have something stamped on it. Our souls have the image of God impressed on our souls. The image of Caesar is, is stamped on the coin with the hammer. The image of God is impressed on our souls by grace. If we do not want to lose our material wealth, which is the image of Caesar because of injustice, we should be much more careful not to lose the image of God on our souls because of sin. This is what St. Augustine teaches us about this beautiful gospel passage. So, brothers and sisters, let's try to remember this very important rule. We have God's image impressed on our souls. But if we sin mortally, we lose this image and endanger the salvation of our souls. So let's ask Our Lady, Our Blessed Mother, to preserve and to always protect us 
against the dangers of mortal sin. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Salve Maria.